Hello, I'm Dave and this is Logan, out once again for a walk in the countryside. Thanks for joining us. Now today we're at a place called Chapel Common. It's about a mile southwest of Liphook off the B2070 and five miles northeast of Petersfield, both of which are in Hampshire, but uh, we are currently in West Sussex, although we will be crossing the border a few times. We're just inside the South Downs National Park. And we're going to be doing a five and a half mile circular route through woods, across heathland, along at least three long distance paths. Uh, we'll be seeing a couple of fascinating churches that are right next door to each other and lots of interesting things to see and explore along the way. Now I'm filming uh, in the autumn, the sun is out, there's lots of blue sky, very little wind, should be perfect conditions for walking. So. Do come along with us. Well I've parked my car at uh, Langley Wood, uh, quite close actually to Langley Court which we're not going to be able to see but uh, I'll tell you a little bit about it anyway. It was formerly known as Langley House, uh, a 19th century mansion built in Tudor style incorporating a previous 17th century building here. And it was established in the 19th century for the daughters of army officers based in India. And it was a school in the 1960s. I think it was called Baikula or Baisula. Not quite sure how you pronounce that. But it was used as a location for the 1950 film Happiest Days of Your Life with Alistair Sim and Margaret Rutherford and Joyce Grenfell. Anyway, let's uh, start the walk by uh, heading on to Chapel Common. And we'll shortly be joining the uh, Serpent Trail, our first uh, long distance path of the day. It's uh, 64 miles in total. It starts at Hazelmere in Surrey and uh, ends at uh, Petersfield in Hampshire. And although those two towns are only about 11 miles apart, you can tell the actual trail winds its way through the sort of northern part of the South Downs National Park. Hopefully Logan and I are going to do the entire trail in about five different stages next year. We'll see how it goes. Certainly a terrific common, great start to the walk, that's for sure. Now, I'm just going to head south for a little bit because uh, there's something I want to show you there. Well, I've just made a little detour across the B2070 to look at a couple of churches that are side by side. So we'll look at the older one first that's just behind me. And isn't that delightful? It's known as the uh, Tuxlith Chapel. It's the old Milan church. Uh, Milan is a village about a mile to the south of here. And it's thought uh, that the uh, chapel served as uh, the parish church of Trotton, which is actually about four miles to the south um, until that was replaced by the present St George's Church uh, at Trotton in the 14th century. In fact, we visited there on our Steddon walk. Anyway, the chapel here was built in the 11th century. It was probably a single cell that was altered in the Middle Ages and more substantially in 1835 when the north transept was added. I think it's got a single bell. Anyway, in the late 19th century, it was considered too small for the congregation and a new one was built next door to it. We'll have a look at that shortly. After 1880, it was used as a Sunday school until it fell into disrepair in the 1930s. It was taken over by the Friends of Friendless Churches in the 1970s and it was declared redundant in 1974 and was refurbished by the Friends in 1993. Let's have a little look inside. Well, folks, there's no light in here at all, so it's very dark, so I, I might have to put some photos up. But there are some information boards on the side giving us all the history. It's wonderful, there's the single sally for the bell. 
It looks as though at some stage there was a wooden gallery above and there's a blocked off doorway up there. There's some stairs outside that lead up to it. And just further around, we've got the, the pulpit up there, some wooden boards, the Lord's Prayer, Exodus, and uh, it's, it's well maintained. It looks as though it's certainly been refurbished. And there's a, a lovely atmosphere to it, really pretty. And just outside the, the church, you've got these uh, unmarked graves. Now, I believe these are children's graves, and some sources suggest uh, that um, they originate from the 1940s when there was an outbreak of scarlet fever. But then I saw another source that suggested it might have had a connection with the flu outbreak in 1918. Well, literally next door to the old church is the, the new church, the uh, Church of St. Luke's, and it's known as the Church in the Woods, built in 1878, uh, obviously to replace the old church. And the style is very much uh, 14th century. The tall, thin tower was completed in 1880. There was a, a space for a clock, but it was never actually installed due to the cost. And it consists of a nave, chancel, west tower, northwest porch, and southeast vestry. I think it's got six bells. Well, in we go. <laughs> I have found some light, so hopefully it'll be clear enough. A magnificent uh, sort of circular font there. And I was reading that it possibly has Saxon origins and was found in the churchyard, possibly from a, an earlier church. This is uh, quite an impressive uh, building. Beautiful uh, stained glass window above the altar there. Just looking up into the ceiling above, wooden, with some beams across. Like so many churches at the moment, it's the, uh, the Queen's funeral, a couple of days time, and there's a little a photograph and uh, candles on the side there. Uh, this really is quite stunning. There's some more beautiful stained glass windows on the side there. Let's get a little bit closer up to the altar. The organ on the left there. And just some terrific um, uh, sort of painted figures right by the altar there. Beautiful, isn't it? Fascinating looking at some of the graves here that look as though they've been overgrown with um, sphagnum moss. That's a very spongy moss. Aha! Now this is a grave that I've been looking for. It's the grave of Sir Thomas Sutherland, founder of uh, HSBC Bank in 1865. He died in 1922. And the reason for my interest, well, I spent quite a few years of my life working for Midland Bank and HSBC, so I feel I should uh, respectfully uh, visit the grave. Isn't that a lovely sight in the morning, sunshine, colourful on the uh, cross there. Well, I've just recrossed the B2070. It's a dual carriageway, it's unusual for a B road perhaps, but it used to be the old A3, the road from um, Guildford to uh, Portsmouth, until the new A3 bypass was built in the 1990s. They reckon the new bypass uh, took 20 minutes off the journey time from uh, London to Portsmouth. So we're now back onto uh, Chapel Common, rejoin the Serpent Trail. Now I'm going to start heading northwards. I 
So the weather today is absolutely spot on. Real sort of autumnal feel. Just looking around at some of the heather here, just colour just beginning to go over, but very much a traditional heathland landscape. Now, somewhere around here, and I'm not 100% sure where, um, there's an old Roman road, according to an old map, but uh, I can't find it. One thing I must say about the, the Serpent Trail is that uh, it's certainly well waymarked. If you're doing the trail itself, uh, you're not going to get lost, I promise. Now, just looking through those trees, I don't know if you can see, there's a cricket pitch. And I think this is the Lip Hook and Ripsley Cricket Club. I was reading that uh, they reached the National Village Cup Final at Lords in 2018 and they play in the Southern Premier League. They were formed by a merger of two long-standing clubs in 1970s. Well, we've done a, a little bit of an unexpected detour, but we're not far off our main route. We're actually now on the Sussex Border Path, which is the 156-mile long-distance path established in the 1990s. It basically follows the, the border, or roughly the border of Sussex with them. Um, Hampshire, Surrey and Kent. But it does give us the opportunity of having a quick look at Liphook Golf Club, which we're, well, we're just crossing through at the moment. It was founded in the 1920s. The uh, first nine holes uh, were on the north side of Portsmouth Road and the, they were opened in 1922. And uh, it was enlarged to the full 18 holes in 1923. Its first clubhouse was the then Wheatsheaf Hotel, one of Liphook's two coaching inns on the old Portsmouth Road. I think it's now called the Lynx Tavern. And the new clubhouse was opened in the late 1950s. <laughs> Well, we managed to cross the Lip Hook Golf Course without getting hit by any low-flying balls. And we're just uh, now crossing uh, uh, the railway, the main um, London to Portsmouth line, just uh, crossing a bridge. So, um, yeah, the next station up line to the northeast is Lip Hook. Well, it looks as though we've still got a little bit more of the golf course to circumnavigate. And uh, the path we're on, I'm pretty sure, is actually the um, Hampshire-Sussex uh, border. But I don't mind because, you know, I think golf courses, summer, autumn, they look at their best. It really is quite beautiful. just an update on the route. We're just about to join our third major long distance path of the walk, the Shipwrights Way, which is a 50 mile long distance path from Alice Holt Forest uh, near Farnham that goes all the way to Portsmouth. It, it's supposed to represent the journey of an oak tree from the forest to Portsmouth where it was converted and made into a ship. And we're also just about to go into the Foley Estate. Well, we're just making our way down a beautiful driveway to Foley Manor, 
bordered by a rhododendron each side. I don't think we're going to see the manor itself. It's a 19th century, vaguely Italianti country house. It shows as Foley, F-O-W-L-E-Y house on an 1898 map. I'm hoping it's pronounced Foley and not Folly. <laughs> but just on the side here, just you can see underneath the trees and quite stunning lakes with lilies. I guess uh, the water makes its way to join the, the river way. Well, there are the gates to Foley Manor, which we're not going to be able to see. But just in front of the gates is this rather splendid statue. It's a chap called Lord Strathnairn. It was uh, apparently unveiled in 1895 on uh, Brompton Road in London. It was then taken down in 1931 and kept in storage until 1964. And then Westminster Council gave it uh, to the owner of Foley Manor on the condition that it would have reasonable public access. And Field Marshal Hugh Henry Rose, 1st Baron Strathnairn, GCB, GCSI, PC. <laughs> well, he was a senior British Army officer who died in 1885 at the age of 84. Uh, apparently never married or had any children. And I believe there's a memorial to him in St Paul's, but uh, I've no idea if he's got any connection uh, to this area. And there's a view of uh, one of the lakes on the northern side. Absolutely exquisite. I love the reflections of the, the trees on the, the water. Well, just a quick update in case you might be doing this walk after watching the video. Um, We've left the Shipwrights Way and had our most northerly point and now heading south. Uh, looks like we're still um, following the county boundary and just by me here there's a, looks like a, a, a well, I don't know if it's a boundary bank or whether it's a, an enclosure bank. Reminds me very much of the enclosure banks in the New Forest. Um, sort of, a, I don't know, a metre high, something like that, covered in moss. It might just be a boundary, of course, of the, the estate. Well, this little bit of wooded area that I'm going through now really is quite magical. There's still plenty of uh, leaves on the trees. That's lovely with the sun sort of filtering through the canopy above. A lot of the, the bracken just starting to get a little bit brown now. You know, autumn really won't be far away, but so peaceful in here, it really is. Wow, just look at this. It is incredible. Now this is part of the Champneys Forest Mears, basically 160 acres of woodland, green open area, and uh, this quite incredible lake. It's uh, very much a calming oasis. It's a health spa, and indeed a very long established health farm I think it was taken over by Champneys in the mid 1990s. It's got something like 87 bedrooms. I think it was previously called the Forest Mere Health Farm, but uh, not sure when it actually started as a, a health farm as such. The, um, the house itself was built between 1881 and 1892 by uh, Sir Henry Cotton, who uh, was the Right Honourable Lord Justice of Appeal. But, oh, I could just stand here for ages and just take this in. Really is quite glorious. It's amazing some of the places that you find deep in the countryside. Uh, just down this little road here is the Liphook Equine Hospital. Been here for over 45 years and it's one of the largest uh, equine uh, veterinary practices in the UK with well over 90 staff. We're now very much on the homeward leg. Stood on the Sussex border path with 
come underneath the railway line. A lovely little arch to come through. And now heading back to Chapel Common. Well, Logan's on the lookout for squirrels. And this is a really uh, atmospheric little path that we're coming along. Must be quite ancient, I reckon, looking at the depth of the banks, well used in the past. And I love the way the ferns and the moss are attached to the side. Just gives it, as I said, very much its own little uh, atmosphere. Well, we're nearly back at the car now. I think we've just crossed that Roman road again for the second time. I think, I'm pretty sure it's uh, this, well, along the lines of where these telegraph poles are. Or I might be totally wrong. Well, folks, we've come to the end of our walk. We thought we'd do the end scene here in front of Lord Stratton. <laughs> we hope you enjoyed the walk. If you did, please do give us a thumbs up and a like and to leave a comment. And do check out our Facebook page, Dave's Countryside Walks. So until we meet again, thanks for watching and cheerio. Good boy.